Hello and welcome. I am Matt Roddy, and this is the Greater Prescott Podcast, where we talk about, you guessed it, all things Greater Prescott. Today, I want to welcome my guest, Dr. Nick Shembri from, it says it on his shirt, Prescott Family Chiropractic. Dr. Nick. Nick. Yep. Mr. Shembri. Yes. Thank you so much for being a guest. Thank you for having me on. To kick it off, yep. what do you do? Okay. And why do you do it? Okay. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a chiropractor. Um, I opened Prescott Family Chiropractic about seven weeks ago. Uh, I practiced for the last 15 years, however. Um, I opened up Prescott Family Chiropractic to create a community health center, essentially. Um, I'm, I, I like to find a community of holistic people that I can help take care of and help mm-hmm. lead through this journey we call life, essentially, yep. and uh, do everything I can. From, from a chiropractic standpoint, obviously, uh, we adjust, yep. but I try to approach it a little different where I'm looking for the root cause of the problem. Uh, a lot of times this comes from neurology and functional movement patterns, but it also goes into nutrition and diet because that's a big one in our life. Yep. And then uh, we, we end up in also some some coping strategies and mental and emotional health stuff that we'll talk about. I know you're a psychology yeah. major, so I'm sure you love all that stuff, but I try to- But address... I don't struggle with any of it, so- <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah. Because you're a psychology major, <laughs> that's how it works. Um, so I try, to, I try to, you know, individually when somebody comes in, I try to address their physical, chemical, and emotional stressors and health and, and go from there. And, and the adjustment is one tool in my tool bag, yeah. and it's probably the most important one, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into over mm-hmm. time. But um, yeah, that's, that's what I do. Fantastic. Thanks again for your time. You. I love hearing people's stories. I look forward to learning why you like doing what you do. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's so interesting. Good. So kick it off. Okay. Where were you born and raised? What did you do when you were a kid? And just kick it off. Okay. Um, I was born and raised in, uh, I was born in Hemet, raised in Santa Cena, which is right outside of Hemet, same, kind of the same area. Okay. Um, Went back and forth between San Antonio and Hemet for most of my life, and then into Temecula as well. Okay. Uh, so those are kind of the areas we grew up in. It was a very small town community growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of retirement people, similar to Prescott. Yeah. Prescott. Um, we we were outdoors. I mean, every okay. day we're outside. Uh, baseball was big on my block, so we had a cul-de-sac, okay. and we played baseball almost every day. Uh, skateboarding, bike riding, BMX. Mountain biking, um, you know, getting getting outdoors and getting dirty. It was just, that's what you did. We, you know, I think it was that 80s, 90s. Like, you didn't come home until the lights came on. That's same with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, which which was amazing. Um, and, you know, that's part of the reason that we're here in Prescott now mm-hmm. is we want our kids to be raised the same way. Yeah. And it's getting harder and harder when cities get bigger and bigger, such as the Hemet and Temecula Absolutely. area that I grew up in. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as we are both parents, yep. it's so important that we are intentional. Yeah. And it's hard to be because you're, um, we're both really busy. Yep. And I've got four kids. You've got two kids. Yep. Been married forever. Yep. We just, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So being intentional is hard, but yeah. well worth it. Yeah. Purpose driven life uh, is, is something that I really try for. And that, that only, you know, not only comes in the, the health aspect of how I take care of myself uh, again. Yeah physically healthy, you know, going to the gym and exercising, stretching, uh, getting the cardio in, but then chemically and emotionally mm-hmm. making sure that I'm eating the things I'm supposed to eat. I, I have a pretty severe gluten sensitivity okay. and I love it, but uh, I, I love eating uh, gluten who doesn't love pizza yeah. and, and that kind of stuff, but uh, it's something I have to avoid. And, yeah. you know, so purpose driven life and same for my kids. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. How many brothers and sisters? Um, I have five brothers that we, we grew up five boys and one girl. And Whoa. so big family, uh, the baby was a girl, uh, no way. Yeah, and she's, she's, she, she's sweet, but she's, she can hold her own. If you know what I mean? <laughs> <She's> better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's pretty tough. Um, and so, you know, we, like I said, we grew up outdoors and loved it. Uh, we all played together. We had, you know, neighbors that had a bunch of kids. And so yeah. it, it was constant, uh, Absolutely. outside and, you know, enjoyable. So, yeah, yeah. man, I, m- my memories of growing up outside essentially yeah. are, i'm so fond of them yes i just loved growing up outside and, and i'm sure you're the same you want to give that to your kids you want to show them the same thing that you had absolutely yeah. Yeah. i mean we're not big on electronics yeah. in my house yeah well it's my... just we have them but we're it's like go outside yeah Let's well my daughter you, to do. you know until she was uh three years old i don't think she even seen a tv right because uh, we were we were going a little extreme on that and one of my friends had to point it out and he said you know um 
the world is advancing. You're going to have the technology, so you got to have a little bit of balance, which we, we start you know, slowly brought in. So you don't want them to be naive, but no. at the same time, you don't want to throw them to the wolves. Yes, exactly. So I don't want to just the... jump into like the the normal of the world living. I want I want to kind of have that yeah. traditional life that we you know mm-hmm. I grew up with. So yeah, yeah. Was baseball your sport? Baseball was my sport. Okay. Um, really, from a young age, that's all we did. Like, okay. as, uh, we had a bunch of boys, so mm-hmm. we had pretty much half a baseball team. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> and so we played baseball all the time. That was definitely the big one. But then as I became a teenager, mm-hmm. I went into a lot of skateboarding. Okay. Uh, that was probably one of my big things was skateboarding. Yeah. And then as I got older, it became mountain biking and rock climbing okay. and backpacking and hiking, uh, which, you know, near the Hemet Temecula area, we have Idlewild. And I was talking about that earlier. And yeah. It, it reminds me of Prescott. You yeah. know? It's it's a beautiful small town with beautiful pine trees and great big mountains and peaks yeah. and uh, it was it was amazing. So, yeah, yeah, that was one of the big draws to here is the outdoor hiking, right? Mountain biking, and everything else. Yeah, yeah. So. so many outdoor things to do. Yeah, and frankly, aside from some really good snowfalls, you can be outside most of the year, even in the winter. Yeah. Uh, it, it could be, this is my theory, it could be 40 degrees outside, yep. but it's sunny. Yeah. And if you're actually moving, yeah. it's com- it's actually comfortable. Yeah. It's yeah, surprisingly, you're may- oh, maybe Shorts. a light pair of gloves. I probably would have on long pants, okay. but it depends how what you're doing. Yeah. And it's, we haven't, it's just sunny here. We haven't it's experienced wonderful. it yet. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the true. Snow. We've only been here eight weeks. Yeah. And so we've just had nothing but uh, beautiful weather, yeah. to be quite <laughs> honest. And now we have a little bit of the monsoons coming in, which is, uh, we were talking earlier, I love it. I it's, think it's amazing. So It's lovely. Yeah. So what did you do after high school? Um, so through high school, um, I actually, so you, you grew up with in your dad's shop, right? We were yes. talking about this. So mechanics yeah. and all that fun stuff. Yeah. What'd your folks do? So my dad is a roofing contractor. Okay. Uh, my mom worked for the hospital for most of it, but it was also home part of it, okay. uh, administrator. Um, so we grew up in my dad's shop and metal work and working with cars and yeah. he was a roofing contractor. So we grew up also, you know, hard labor and learning, yep. uh, learning work ethic. Mm-hmm. Um, so right out of high school, I decided I wanted to go to college, but also uh, had to pay for it myself. Okay. So I did a community college uh, there in San Jacinto and uh, started my first two years. And Going through those first two years, I was a math major, actually. Okay. Uh, it came easy. And so I just kind of, you know, right, you don't really know what you're doing at 18, that's for sure. And so I just jumped into, like, taking college classes yeah. in general ed. And yeah. it went into math, and I thought, well, I'll be a teacher because I already know that system. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm off on the summers, and you have, you know, set certain hours, and I can go hiking and do all the the outdoor stuff I love to do. Like, yeah. if I could be paid to just be an outdoor athlete, I'd probably, that would be my, my okay. job. You know what I mean? Uh, but I never got to that level, I guess. So yeah. um, I went to community college there. And then, um, you know, I don't know, life took some twists and turns. And I'm assuming you want me to tell you all about it. So so real quick, yeah. what kinds of stuff were you doing in the shop? So I and uh, for the people, I'll set the context. Yeah. I grew up in a 1,500 square foot house. My dad built a 2,000 square foot garage yep. out back. And he would a couple, three of his crazy projects were a guy who owned a Oh, 911 and two NSXs in and he wanted Chevy V8s put in them. Put in them. Like, so, is- and my dad was just a fabricator and he also built circle track chassis. So I just, I grew up, there was a lay, the mill. Yeah. There was, it was better than most people's shop that they could have yeah. outside their house or not even on their property. Yeah. And that's what I grew up in doing. So you're pretty proficient in welding and doing some of the uh, fab? A, li- a little. A little. My you dad was definitely- So you're comfortable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, literally everything. Um, okay. You know, so again, I think there was, we, we grew up in a, in a, in a construction family. So yeah. we did everything from building patios and decks to actually working for my dad roofing. But then a lot of it, I liked cars. Okay. So I grew up uh, loving cars. Uh, Broncos specifically, the early oh. Broncos. I still have one. I got it when I was 16. You still have it? Yep. Uh, Good So job. I've had it for almost 25 years now and uh, I'm waiting on the new Bronco, but that's a whole other yeah. situation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, so I grew up working on some of his cars, okay. taking care of that, uh, you know, driving big trucks when he needed me yep. to, and doing doing some you know yeah. some crazy hard labor. But that was also one of the things that made me want to go to college. Right. Um, he had quite a few employees, and you know they would always tell me, you know, go to go to college, yeah. Nick, go to college, and they kept pushing me, you know, to go do it. And so I just little by little went to college, yeah. and that unfolded, and it, it unfolded to um, a love for anatomy and physiology, which we'll okay. get into at some point. Mm-hmm. But, um, so anything from working on you know cars and yeah. fabricating a little bit. Okay. Uh, he had a big metal shop, and okay. so you 
pretty much if you need something made out of metal, I could do it. You could do it. Yeah. Now I'm very like I haven't done that in twenty some odd right. years, but mm-hmm. I'm sure I could pick it back yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of fun. What kind of cars did your dad have? Um, Anything? He wasn't. My dad wasn't into cars. Okay. Yeah. He actually uh, didn't really care about all that fun stuff. Yeah. I just happened to get into cars, and gotcha. some of the guys that worked for him actually one of the guys, which was his uh, head guy, was into sand jeeps and hot rods and yeah. novas and and um, okay. So they did a lot of street races. Well, he actually taught me a lot. He was uh, okay. one of my mentors, I guess, in life. And um, yeah. so he, he would have, you know, the, the big Chevy truck with 44-inch tires on it going down the road. He, he was he was a truck. absurd. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, it was very absurd. And that was exactly his personality. He had a Jeep yeah. that would do wheelies down the street. Like, yeah. it, it, and this is That's... out of his garage he built. It. And he was, he was yeah. that fabricator guy. But That's my favorite. He made his living, uh, you know, doing roofing is what he did at the time. So. That is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. So most of my brothers, we all grew up in that same um you know doing those same things doing those well i think i did more than, okay. than them um only because i actually well i lived with my dad and they lived with my mom so we had gotcha. yeah yeah a little a uh, little bit of separation mm-hmm. in that one in some ways so uh so i i just was always involved in it always at the shop you know what i mean it'd be a school night i'm there till 10 o'clock and and that, absolutely dad's working so yeah yeah, yeah. i I, you said work ethic, you know, my parents taught me work ethic and it was, I I think it was kind of indirect in a way. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Emily and I, this is something we're really working with our kids on. And so they're, they want to do a lemonade stand and they have put together, I brought home boxes, big boxes from work that they made some signs. They've already started making the lemonade stuff. And, and I'm so excited as a parent, like guys, yes. You got to work hard in life, but it can also be fun yeah. and it's rewarding. And so, but sometimes it's not, it's just learning life. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah, you're teaching like them entrepreneurship, that. right? Yes. Uh, hard work, basic work ethic, as mm-hmm. you're saying, and uh, just getting out there and being uncomfortable too. Totally. Right? So, so setting mm-hmm. up a lemonade stand, I've seen my daughter do the same thing and, you know, they have to be confident in themselves to say, hey, come over and try our lemonade yes. and to a perfectly, you know, a stranger. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. That's why I had my kids meet you when you came in the house today is for that exact reason. Yeah. Just this is normal kiddos, but yeah. you got to learn. Yeah. And obviously you're uncomfortable. Yeah. Make eye contact, do the handshake, do, yep. you know, do the things that you're supposed to do. And, and mm-hmm. you know, this is, uh, again, one reason we moved to Prescott is yep. we want to keep those traditions that we grew up with. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely feel like this area has those values and traditions. It sure does. Like. Yeah. Yep. So. so you get your AA from community college? Yep. Get my AA from community What'd college. What did you do after that? Um, well, I'll, I'll kind of back yeah. up a little bit because um, Fill in the... at the time I was going to be a math teacher, as I was telling you. Mm-hmm. And um, I realized, you know, working – Every day, and then I was I was going to transfer basically to the the, the four year college essentially to Cal State San Bernardino, okay. that's where I was, where I was going to do the math major, and I I needed some work at night so I didn't have to work during the day so I could go to college during yeah. the day, and so I took an EMT course okay. and I became an EMT. Uh, within probably two weeks, I fell in love. Like, yeah. and it wasn't the EMT; it wasn't all the the you know the the mess of that. It was the anatomy and physiology. Okay, so I loved understanding the structure of the body. Right. So anatomy means uh, essentially uh, form, right, or structure. Yeah, educate us. Yes. And physiology means function. So the anatomy has to be correct in order for the physiology to okay. be correct, right? So learning how the body, you know, reacts to and adapts to different um, insults that it has to work with. So, you know, if we. If we remove the gallbladder, right, which we need because mm-hmm. it actually fills up and, and helps us to process fats and different things, your liver will take over if you remove that gallbladder, okay. which is really kind of neat, right? So it's it's crazy how the body can adapt for survival to not everything, but to almost a anything. Lot of stuff. Which um, so I fell in love with anatomy and physiology, um, and from there I decided I'm gonna change my major, and okay. I started working. Uh, as an EMT, mm-hmm. uh, I worked uh, in the ER actually, and actually one of the I'm, I'm going to go off on a tangent, yeah, because this is how that's it works. what this. Uh, one of the nurses I worked with there in the ER, he actually opened up. He moved to Prescott about seven eight years ago. Worked for the VA. Okay. Um, I went to high school with him. His name's Tommy Gann. He opened up Priority Family Medical. Okay. And um, he worked in the ER with me. I remember at, at a young age, and yeah. he moved up here, started a medical facility. And so I watched him come up this way, and I thought, I'm going okay. to move to Prescott at some point. <laughs> Uh, so that was kind of a unique little situation yeah. where, you know, growing up with somebody that went through some of the same things, trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I fell in love with working in that medical side. And, and I remember I was, I was going to be a medical doctor and I was going to work in the ER. Um, I was going to maybe have a family practice and I went to my family physician and, uh, and 
I, I told him, I was, you know, yeah. I was all excited. I was pumped. Of course, so of I walk course. In, I'm like, hey, Dr. <laughs> Mac, um, guess what? Like, I found this. I love anatomy. I love physiology. I love understanding how the body works. And I'm going to follow in your footsteps. Mm-hmm. And he, he literally stopped me right there. Right. And I was all elated, all excited, just yeah. ready to go. And he said, you're not going to be a medical doctor. And I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, he's like, he basically went into his story and he, he told me how he was struggling, yeah. uh, how he worked. You know, just too many, too many hours. Yep. Uh, he was, you know, going through some family issues mm-hmm. because of that, and it was creating a lot of chaos in his life. Um, he told me, he said, "Go two doors down, talk to Doctor Zrebny, and uh, you're going to be a chiropractor." He said, "It fits your lifestyle." He's, he he was my family doctor for years, so he knew, you yeah, know, all my broken bones. Yeah. Why, you know, why? I mean, talk about was, kind of a holistic approach in a sense. Yes, uh, the active lifestyle. And he said, yeah. "If you want to keep the, your active lifestyle, if you want to have fun like that." Let's um, let's go introduce you to Doctor Zerebny and I and I left and I said no I'm not going to be yeah, yeah. I be a real doctor you know uh-huh. and I don't want to be a chiropractor and so I left and um, I was in my anatomy first stages of that so I just had finished anatomy one and okay. I was going into anatomy and physiology two and my teacher happened to be a chiropractor okay yeah and so she kind of grabbed me by the arm and said. You're going to be a chiropractor. No so this kidding. Is, yeah, second person. And I, you know, said, no, 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 no. And uh, <laughs> so she made me do some research. Okay. Uh, she said for my, you know, end of the year project, I had to read a book called Chiropractic First by okay. Terry Romberg. And uh, I read it and I was automatically hooked. Okay. And, and I knew it's what I wanted to do. It was, it's a way of working with the body for its natural healing abilities, right? So the body um, has an innate ability to heal itself yep. if we allow it, if we encourage it, if we give it the right things. And chiropractic is one of those tools to keep that communication from the brain down the spinal cord and out to all the organs. Uh, your brain is one of 12 systems, but it's the master system that controls all of them. Okay. And that's what the book was all about. You know. Yeah. So if you have something going on, try chiropr- chiropractic first. And if that's not going to help it, great. We can always go to that next level. Mm-hmm. So uh, least invasive to most invasive. Yes. So anyway, took that and um, and decided that, you know, maybe I'm going to look into this. And then I kind of also was going, well, maybe I'll be a PT. <laughs> uh, at the same time, one brother was studying to be a nurse because okay. uh, I told you I had a lot of family. Uh, another brother was studying to be a dentist. Uh, the brother studying to be a dentist was in Minnesota and shouted a few dentists, hated it. Yeah. And ended up um, – by the way, that's what you should – the first thing you should do if you think you want to do something. Shadow. Go yeah. shadow someone. Yeah. Which was really, you know, something that I did. I knew what the chiropractor did, but mm-hmm. I just, you know, would pop in and get adjustment here or there. And yep. it wasn't something that I was like, oh, that's what I want to do, right. I guess, at that time. Um, but like I said, as I understood – Really, as I understood what it was, more than just what I think our public sense the of it. The outcome of it or – yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the perception. Is, the the perception, perception, you know, the cultural yeah. perception is I have a lower back pain. Mm-hmm. That's the most common one and I need to go get it adjusted. And they're going to realign my spine, which is really scientifically not what happens. Yeah. Um, and so when I got to understand the whole philosophy of it as well, so the art, science, philosophy of chiropractic – that's when I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I've been preaching about since I was, you know, gotcha. a little kid. Essentially, yeah. have an active lifestyle, eat fairly healthy, exercise, and mm-hmm. take care of yourself. So, move well, eat well, think well. Right? That's not a. That's not a, not that complicated as far as a uh, a treatment. <laughs> we try to overcomplicate things. We do. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, uh, my brother, who was going to be a dentist, was in Minnesota, uh-huh. and um, he hated it. Yeah. He hated it. And so there was a, there was a chiropractic school down the road, and he said, I, I think I'm going to be a chiropractor. And I said, I'm thinking about the same thing, yeah. but I'm going to go look at physical therapy <laughs> first. Long story short, he became a chiropractor as well. He had a very uh, unique experience with okay. chiropractic. When we were younger, he um, was assaulted by a gang, essentially. He lived okay. in Riverside. So I, I told mm-hmm. you, I have a little yeah. mixed family. Um, yeah. And... Uh, they knocked his teeth out, uh, yeah. concussion, amnesia. I mean, it was it was horrible. And uh, he was having migraines after that, you know, constantly. And mm-hmm. no matter what they did, they couldn't figure it out. CT scans, MRIs, everything looked fairly normal. Yeah. And finally, a chiropractor said, get adjusted. And so okay. he got him adjusted. And a few, a few treatments into his mm-hmm. corrective care plan with this chiropractor, and his migraines were gone. Okay. Right? So my brother already had a very big connection to it. So did my family after that. Naturally. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I went through chiropractic school. He went through chiropractic school. No, we okay. came out into Marietta and opened up a business together. Okay. And so in Marietta, we practiced for seven years. We moved our office location about two miles okay. into Temecula. And we practiced in Temecula for another seven, eight years before yeah. I had to tell him that I, you know, I want to move to Press. press Are you younger or older? I'm younger. Okay. Yeah, he's the oldest of the whole family. Okay. Yep. And okay. so, um, yeah, we, we lived in that area for quite a while and, and loved 
married at Temecula had a, a really awesome holistic community that I was yeah. a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's mm-hmm. one of the big things that even coming on your podcast and being in town, I'm looking for that that community that I've yeah. always worked with, that I care for, that I watch out for, that I help to try to lead in their healthy decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. So that that's part of what led me here, you know, as far as the academic side of, of my life. Yeah. So, yeah. What's your wife's name? Amanda. When did you meet Amanda in this story? Oh, wow. Well, um, interesting. So Amanda was my neighbor. We grew up together. Okay. Uh, we lived uh, right behind each other mm-hmm. in house. Her, her dad was the local sheriff. Right? Oh, the funny. Local, yeah. And he, you know, he knew everyone. He He's yeah, uh, just a genuine, good person mm-hmm. looking out for all the kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. And so he looked out for everybody in the neighborhood, oh, including me. And, you know, we could. I was telling you earlier, we couldn't get away with anything in a small <laughs> town, right? Yeah. Uh, so he was our neighbor. She was my neighbor. Yeah. Uh, we've known each other since we were about five or six. Wow. Didn't start dating until we were 22. Okay. Um, we knew each other, but we never really hung out, mm-hmm. right? So my, my little brother and sister hung out with her a little bit more. Um, It wasn't until her cousin, who happened to be one of my good friends, uh, got married and was having a reception that I got invited to that we started talking and everything kind of escalated from that. Okay. Which is pretty cool. That's Uh, awesome. So we have been married now going on 13 years. Okay. Yep. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Let's like make sure. (laughs) Emily and I just had our 11th. You did? Yeah. We both do the double take sometimes. Did I get it right? Well, especially after the last like year or two that we've had, um, you know, our our anniversary the year before was right when COVID hit pretty much. Oh, okay. And so anniversary was at home and just a little bit kind of like, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, And you have kids, right? Mm -hmm. So our our one before that was our 10 year. Okay. And we started, funny story, we started our way out to Napa. My dad was watching the kids and got almost got up to solving uh, from Temecula. Loved it. We're spending the night and he calls. That little Dutch town? Yeah. Yeah, Beautiful. Really cool little area. Oh, so neat. Went out to dinner, got back to the hotel. My dad calls and said, you know, Will's got a really bad fever. and And I'm like, okay. And so, you know, I tell my wife and she said, we're going home. Like, oh. uh, so 10 year, then 11 year was COVID. And then this last year, uh, which was a really good anniversary, yeah. we were traveling. Yeah, so right. we, we traveled for uh, this last year and went and seen a lot of national parks. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it was awesome before we settled down in Prescott. So. That is, I love it. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it, it's, it's been a... Uh, it's been a heck of a journey, that's for sure. Uh, yes. Yeah. Most marriages yeah. are a journey. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, and I meant more the last year, but yeah, I mean, yeah. This, is, this whole thing is a journey, uh, yeah. life, and, and, and definitely uh, marriages. You know, you learn a lot about yourself, and I think one of my top priorities, we talk about this all the time, like priorities in family. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be, um, if you kind of go through, you know, the upper your echelon of your ideals. Priority it's, stack, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, <laughs> so ultimately I want to be a good man. Yeah. I want to be a good Christian man mm-hmm. that takes care of um, my community, my family. And so then it goes, okay, well, I want to be a good, you know, husband. And I want to be a good dad. And you start going down all those little yep. things and what that means. And it's it's uh, it's a lot of work. It's, it is a lot of work. Yeah. But and well worth it. And it's as, well. Oh, at the end of the day, when you can especially when you, when you see your kids introduce yep. themselves and shake mm-hmm. a hand and, and and know what they're doing, it's like you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah. So, so literally, Amanda was your behind the house neighbor. Yes. That is everybody kind of jokes awesome. with us like Dawson's Creek or something. If you remember that show, I hate <laughs> and my wife. I'm would. gonna date myself. You know what I mean? But <laughs> um, but yeah, we uh, well we also went to the same. We grew up in a Catholic school together, yeah. and but we you know. Didn't know each other as well as we did until we got older. She was a little bit younger than me, so. Yeah. Yeah. Was your wife working? Or Yeah, just a little bit about your wife. Yeah. Um, She, at the time, was, yeah, she was working. She's always been office administrator. Okay. Um, She's just great at that. She, I mean, she can run an office. She's helped us start this office here in in Temecula. But she, uh, we're talking about kind of priorities in the echelon. Mm -hmm. Her top priority is definitely, you know, mom. She's a mama bear, you know. Um, Same with Emily. Yeah, so she... You know, always worked as more of an office administrator, taking care of different insurance companies and different things. Okay. And, um, you know, when we decided to have kids, we had to make that decision. You know, do we want to both work and mm-hmm. you know, get a nanny or do something like that? Um, and we decided that, you know, she would stay home. And we thought okay. that was the best way to ideally raise our kids the, in the way that we wanted to. Yes. And so she stayed home to uh, raise our kids. And she has been home, I think, for about 11 years now. Yay. And, uh, Yay, well, Amanda. Well, that's a lot of work. Oh, as you I... know, like we were just talking about homeschooling. Like, it's a lot of work, and she's done that as well. So. I could not stay home with my kids yeah. how my wife does. Yeah. I'm just, I'm absolutely not built for it. Yes. I love being a father, yeah. but I could not be home yeah. well, with them and, and, for that long. <laughs> I, so this last year, like I said, I took a 
time off after we, you know, sold the business and the house in Temecula, yeah. we traveled. And so I had been home every day for the year with the kids yeah? and helped homeschool, which was uh, amazing. It, it, honestly, that is very rewarding to do, uh, to watch your kids grow and change and know that you had a big part in that. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so I couldn't do it either. Uh, yeah. I was very happy to get back to work in yeah. some ways, you know, and, and <laughs> uh, missed taking care of my community. Um, not that I don't yeah. want to take care of the kiddos. Just, of course. It's just, it's a, it's a yeah. full-time job. Yeah. You got to yeah, it's this isn't across the board, yeah. but I think God created men. Yeah. We just have more of a sense of work away from the house, yeah. and the moms have more of a sense to work within the house. Agreed. Mm-hmm. And so, if you look at it from um, an ancestral or evolution or natural mm-hmm. uh, way, that is how it's always worked, yeah. right? So, um, you know, things have changed in our world today, and I wasn't going to get into all this, yeah. but I mean. This is hey so this table is long form for a reason. Okay, cool. Because we just get to touch on a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and you'll bring, you'll bring me back if I get that's too That's the far fun out. of it. Yeah. That we can go on tangents and we yeah. can talk about stuff. Yeah, and I love just that. like a natural conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um I, I've heard some psychologists talk about mm-hmm. this. Um uh, you know, traditionally, um we, we didn't have formulas. Like if we go back a few hundred, we didn't have a formula for a baby to have. So, you know, nursing was the only thing. That was right. it. That's all we would do. So how could you have a mother go to work if they had to care right. for Take a baby? Care a right. Bit. So this, mm-hmm. you know, and we're talking obviously years ago. And so some of the man-made ingenuities that we have have allowed us to um, – change our culture yeah definitely right and it has mm-hmm. changed our culture uh whether it be formula or birth control or different uh, mm-hmm. things like this to where you know we have a lot more women women in the workforce but i agree with you as far as uh how, how god created us is yeah. the natural order of things seem to be man go out get you know caveman kind of style go out yeah. and get get food hunt gather whatever it is and um you know, the female generally took care of, of kids mm-hmm. and, you know, it's changed and in a lot of ways, sometimes for the better too. And right. uh, so I'm open to both, right? but uh, I do like to look at our ancestral ways. Yeah. That's actually how a lot of times I, um, when somebody comes in and I was talking about chemical, physical, emotional stress yeah. of, a, of a person, I'm taking into account all three of those of what's going on in their lifestyle, trying to as much as I can pull yeah. out of them. And I always try to think of it in that natural sense of, um, you know, just because we have a modern man now that, you know, uh, can drink, get a Starbucks really simple and all that fun stuff, yeah. we still come from a primitive survival background. And our neurology is based a, a lot of ways on yeah. a primitive uh, background. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the a lot of the problems that people bring in, I find, is, like we'll talk about just physical because that's my yeah. wheelhouse, is um, habits. It's habits that they have formed that have become um, autopilot, essentially, right? So Absolutely. default mode network, the way they lean to the side, you know, every time or, or this, you know. And so mm-hmm. this becomes your default mode network to where your brain thinks that these postures are where your body's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And so it starts to program that was in there. And deprogramming some of the neurology of people is how I get deeper into mm. helping them. So this is probably one of the things that makes me different as a chiropractor in the Valley is I'm looking at changing those bad habits and trying to create new, okay. better habits. And a lot of times it's so hard to get, take somebody out of their survival instinct because right. that's what a lot of times it is. Yes. When you see somebody throw their lower back out, the position they're in isn't necessarily um, uh, just because they threw the back out. It's because their brain is sending a signal that, hey, we got to survive this. You know, we, gotcha. we got a bear that's chasing us and we have to survive. So what's the best way to do it? We're going to lock up in this way and try to hobble off. Mm-hmm. And so trying to teach the body that bear is not chasing it and we're going to start to <laughs> yeah. unlock it and start to m- get movement through it. It's a lot of work. Um, it, it's it's a struggle. And then, you know, teaching the patient's cues on how to reverse some of those long-term chronic patterns is the, one of the main things that I love to do. So Yeah. Yeah. And one of the most important things. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's being adjusted, uh, you know, you can correct a lot. It's the, probably the main tool in my bag as a okay. chiropractor, right? Um, you can change the neurology in just a second. You can get the joint moving in just a second. But I've never, ever treated anybody's pain, right? Mm. So if you think about this, like people come to you for pain. I've never treated pain. Yeah. You come to me, I can see that you have a pain because you tell me. Yes. Uh, I can tell what dysfunction is going on. I'm going to treat whatever that biomechanical dysfunction mm-hmm. is. And if I correct it from a pathophysiology, a state of, of, of abnormal physiology, and I can get it back to normal structure and physiology, yeah. guess what happens? The side effect is your pain goes away. Pain is just an alarm system saying, hey, fix this. Something's wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the the adjustment is an amazing catalyst to get people moving. 
but I've always felt like um, a lot of times, especially in my early career, you know, see some of the pe- same people come back through the doors three mm-hmm. months later with the same problem. And I know I helped them day one. I'm not saying that, but how much more could I have helped of them? Of course. And mm-hmm. so I, I'm big on going through corrective care and getting somebody yeah. to wellness and trying to teach them, you know, the, the body's natural ability to, is to heal. It wants to heal. Yes. We were created to have an immune system. We were created to have this amazing inflammation, right? So is inflammation good or bad? I would assume bad. Okay. Chronic inflammation okay. is bad, but acute inflammation is amazing. Why? Okay. Right? So we, we were created with these nutrients in our blood that if you cut yourself or mm-hmm. let's say I punched and I got a bruise and there's dead cells now. Yeah. Inflammation comes in. It takes away the old dead cells and it gotcha. brings in new cells and it replaces okay. that. And all of our systems need that life flow, that blood, mm-hmm. those nutrients because, you know, our skin changes itself every 30 days. Yeah. Right? It dies and you, you and, and it remodels your bones every 18 months. You have brand new bones. So what are wild. we – this is where the nutrition comes in. What are we yeah. – are we are we building bones made of Krispy Kremes, you know, or are we mm-hmm. building bones made of, you know, broccoli and, and – Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Greens, grass-fed what, meat. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Some vegan, some not, but whatever it happens to be. Yeah. 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 Okay. So to get us to – more of your business. Yes. How'd you get to Prescott? <laughs> um, we were, I wanted to go in the forest. I wanted to move to the forest. So Temecula is a little bit of desert. Okay. Um, and I wanted to be in the green. And so I looked all around uh, where we were going to go. And I told you we traveled. So yes. we, my father-in-law loved Prescott. Uh, he was the deputy sheriff that he said, I'm moving there when I'm done. And um, so he retired. He hasn't moved here yet. We're still working okay. on it. Um, and so we came and visited Prescott and we fell in love. Yep. Right? Um, I have some friends, like I was saying, that moved here. And so we knew a few people already. Uh, shout out to one of my other buddies, Paul Klein, Paul Klein who uh, owns NARART. He's an artist uh, over at Ian Russell. Oh. Amazing. So if you like cars and Does he bikes. do the car... Uh, the little things with the car parts, like yep. it looks he's like a the, dog. Yep. But it's, he's so, the guy who re, who takes all those car parts, Harley Davidsons and and uh, motorcycles and just different things, and he puts them together and makes beautiful art. I did a podcast with Ian. Okay, cool. At the gallery, yeah. love Ian's gallery. Yes, it's just unique and quirky. It is. I like unique and quirky Me things, too. and that was some of my favorite work because I'm a huge car guy. And so, that was Paul's, and so. he said Paul would be amazing on the podcast. So I might need an introduction. Yeah, I will. Actually, I just <laughs> left the office talking to him earlier. That's so, so funny. Um, I will definitely introduce yeah, you to anybody I stuff. know. Um, <laughs> he's he's a, a really good dude, just in general. So okay. having some friends up here was, you know, kind of brought us to check it out. And we would come visit. We came for New Year's one year and yep. you know hung out at an Airbnb for a few days and absolutely just loved it. Mm-hmm. Every time we would we would uh, every Christmas we would go up to Williams. And yes. we do the Polar Express for the kids or do the Santa. There's, uh, I can't remember all the different things they have up there, but the Christmas. Know. Okay. Really cool stuff. And it would snow like crazy. We're going this winter. Which one? The Polar Express. Okay. Polar Express is cool. Your kids are going to love it. Yeah. Right. Um, and so we would come down. We, we checked out Williams, loved Williams, checked out Flagstaff, loved Flagstaff. Yeah. Came all the way through Sedona and, and down to Prescott our first time. And I remember it just had snowed. And I was talking to a guy in the courthouse <laughs> square. And he goes, this is the most snow we've ever had. This was about five or six years ago. Okay. And, uh, you know, I rolled into that downtown yep. courthouse with all the snow and, and just the beauty of it at Christmas time. And it reminded mm-hmm. me of kind of like a Home Alone, like a John Hughes yes. film. Like it was it was just it, it reminded me of, I guess, kind of like, you know, the earlier times that were absolutely were very comfortable. Yep. And, and uh, a, a quick side, yeah. a quick bit. So I met a guy downtown, yep. an, an old guy who said our square or it's actually a plaza is technically what it's called. That is a design that has they've been you that has been used for a couple hundred years mm-hmm. in the United States. So he's like where I grew up in Pennsylvania they had a town's plaza. And so my wife grew up on the other side of Pennsylvania. She also had a town plaza. Very and similar. then when we wanted to retire, we traveled here yeah. and it was just boom. It this reminds is just me of the like East Coast. Back home. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of a lot of places we visit in the East Coast. I have a lot of family in New York. Okay. So we'll go back there from time to time. Um, and, uh, you know, th- those were some of the things that we loved about it. Just that first time we came and seeing that, it was like, man, this is the place for Christmas yep. for sure. We loved that. And so we'll have to go back when, you know, it's summer. And so we did. We came back and during the summer and spring and a few different times over Good. the last six years. One of the things I loved is you can be in downtown 
and up to Lynx Lake in five minutes, right? Or, or Goldwater, and you're in the you're in pretty deep forest as it, far as I'm concerned. As much yeah. forest as we have, yeah, yeah exactly. it's amazing. It's not the Sierras. It, that it's is not my family's Colorado, favorite yeah. lake. We love Goldwater. It is just stunning. So I haven't been around that one yet okay. too much. So Lynx, we spent a lot of time on Watson yeah. and Willow so far. Mm-hmm. Goldwater, we've been up to it, but haven't had a chance to go and explore. Okay. And we're all big hikers and, yeah. and climbers, and so you'll love uh, it. I, we get our kids out to do all those things. We had them do ten miles in the Grand Tetons, which nice. I was surprised because they wanted to, and you know, it, it was amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. All yeah. right, so, so that's how you ended up in Prescott. Yep, we just fell in love and said, "Well, yeah. it's got the mountains. It's close still. If we need to see family back home, I have again a lot of family." In love. How long it? How many hours is the drive? Uh, about five, six, five, yeah. six. Not bad. Yeah, it's yeah. completely reasonable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we have a lot of friends, too, in the Parker area. Yeah. And we've always gone to – we have family and friends that are down in the Parker, Arizona. And we've always had a river house down there. Yeah. Family house. Absolutely. And uh, so we you know, we have that middle spot, and we can also go to Temecula. Yeah. And it's, 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 we still get those comforts. Yeah. yeah. Just the other day I watched a video. Uh, someone went to – or they they went to the Colorado River, okay, and they all had some boats, so they were doing the boat thing. And I had it had never clicked that the river. And so there's a lot of people that live here who yeah. have places at the river, and yeah. obviously a lot of people I think in California as well. Yes, that have places at the river. And now I get it, and now I can't wait to go. I'm like, have you never oh, been? No. And and the le- the lake yeah. and the mountain, those are my two favorite places. So the river is on a yep. boat is perfect. It's amazing. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, desert river and yeah. then also coming into the mountains desert. Like this is we got the two <laughs> of the best worlds. A lot of people love the beach. I never was a big. I'm not a beach fan. And I grew up surfing. I loved okay. it. I love surfing. I'd never mm-hmm. loved the salt water. Uh, yeah. But put me in a lake. Put me on a wakeboard. Skis. Yes. I'll do it all. I don't. Again, I've always been active and outdoors. Yeah. And so that's what I love. Oh, man. And so we spend a lot of time out there. Good. Uh, going out and just the kids grew up around it they they know all about boats and all the fun stuff yes so, yeah. boats yeah oh man and yeah. i one of my bucket list items is a houseboat on lake Powell for a couple of weeks me too just get me on a houseboat yep. with a ski boat and yep. some wave runners and get me out where i see and no one nobody no cell phone service yeah yeah I, and just fun with your family exactly right? so it's it's, mm-hmm. it's full dedicated time to doing that which is this whole being a good father thing that we we're kind of talking about the ideals right. of life so yeah. yeah all right let's talk about Prescott Family Chiropractic. Okay. So you have, we, what's the date today? August 13th, 13th yeah. 2021. Yeah, it's Friday the 13th. Friday, that's right. Know, Friday the 13th. I, I know when you told me to come over, I'm like, all right. <laughs> you have literally been here seven weeks? Uh, seven, I think we're going into our eighth week. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm a newbie. You are a newbie, yes. but not as a chiropractor. No, no, so, just into Prescott. And, right, right. So yeah. tell us about the practice. Literally, you're just spinning it up, but it's obviously not your first rodeo in that respect. Yeah, yeah no, uh, our office in Temecula, Marietta area, we we had about three different offices, my brother and I. Um, and so coming up here, no, it's not my first rodeo. Mm-hmm. Like, chiropractic is, um, you know, like... It's, it's, that's, that's something that's coming natural now. Now that's something that's very ingrained in me on mm-hmm. what to do for patients and how to help take care of them. Um, we had built pretty good, uh, very good and big business just because of the care that we provided and, and the reputation that went around. And it was, you know, all five stars and just, it was, it was fun. Yep. It was, it was, it was hard to leave. I got to be oh, honest. Oh, I. Um, because it wasn't just leaving a job or a business technically. It was leaving a community that I've always taken care Absolutely. of. Absolutely. But we have always had the dream of moving a little bit mm-hmm. out of California and then, like I said, into the pine trees. Yeah. Um, so Prescott Family Chiropractic, um, I, I pur- purposely chose that name. Uh, I, again, uh, yes, if you have pain and you need acute relief and you want to come in and get adjusted, please, more than welcome. I, I, that's very easy. Yeah. But I do like the creativity portion of chiropractic, the, the art of yeah. chiropractic of, of individually when somebody comes in, um, trying to help them get to their optimum uh, wellness, optimum health, right? Mm-hmm. So this goes from um, a lot of prenatal questions, a lot of prenatal. I do a lot of prenatal work with okay. different uh, moms, uh, postnatal uh pediatric work. So, you know, we get a lot of kiddos in our office. So I I really wanted to drive home that this is a family, this is a community Mm -hmm. wellness center. And I'm not here just to, you know, adjust your pain. I'm here to try to help elevate our our community's wellness and our natural ability to heal and try Mm -hmm. to educate. I'm big on education, right? So the word doctor means teacher. And so I love that part of it. Like I was saying, I was going to be a teacher at one point. So um, it's been one of the most amazing things I've got to do. uh, I've been blessed to do. And, um, you know, classes and workshops are coming. I got to find a venue 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm looking for a venue That's where I can exciting. do some workshops. I have a children's immunity workshop coming up, okay. uh, which will also be kind of an immunity shop, just workshop for anybody in general because it applies to children, it applies to adults most of the time yeah. too. Um, we have a postpartum nutritionist who's going to come in and work with us too Great. that wants to do a workshop. And so I, I'm really looking to create a community wellness center. And I'm in the infant stages I of love building it. that, of which course. we were just talking about. Um, but already the welcoming in Prescott, ha, Prescott has been amazing, right? Um, it, it has been way, way better than I actually intended okay. or expected, I guess. And yeah, uh, yeah. I love that. Like I said, yes. I was telling you, my first two weeks here, they I got pulled into the mayor's booth and introduced to the mayor and all the I city know. council. And I'm like, this never happened. This is there know. are people that you can just walk up to and have a conversation. And with. I love that. This is I love real it. people, and that's what I like. And yeah. that's what we were trying to find is that community for our kids and for. For the business, for for a wellness center, and I know mm-hmm. that some people are not into the wellness model, into the more natural living model, and that's fine. I'm looking for my tribe that I want to help. Absolutely, elevate and who that. they want the help. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I, that, yeah. It, that's that's exciting. I always, um, you know, the the cost I think of chiropractic is can sometimes. I don't want to say just chiropractic, but really in corrective care can be kind of high. And I don't mean price. I mean the commitment that somebody has to make because I'm going to ask you to do things that are not comfortable sometimes, meaning, yeah, hey, we're going to change your diet, you know, and we we love our comforts. We love our conveniences as a society Um, or your gait patterns off or you sleep on your stomach, right, which is really hard on the body to do. So I'm going to encourage you to sleep maybe on your back. Yeah. Um, and we'll go through some of those different things and patterns to help try to change those habits. So Yeah. I had a physical therapist mm-hmm. on the show and it she said the same thing. Like it is hard. It's like it's not – I can help you is essentially what Laura was saying. Like I can help you. That's yes. no problem. Yeah. Are you willing to buy in? Yeah. It's going to be hard, yes. and you're going to. I want you to learn a lot yeah. along the way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, c- commitment it, is my favorite okay. thing when I when somebody comes in. Is well, you know, I'll ask them their goals. You know, if right. your goal is just to get out of pain, okay, we'll we'll treat you a few times, mm-hmm. and when you're out of pain, you know, come back when you are in pain again. Yes. Or let's try to correct the problem, the underlying mm-hmm. issue. Get you out of my office, right? I want to, I want to get you to where you you just know me for the wellness doc. Right. We get out of so you know I think a lot of times, especially in this world today, we're in uh, reactive care, right? Oh, everything. Well, almost a hundred percent. It is, and so yeah. I'm I'm big on the proactive side, and yeah. I like to think of it like we both like sports, right? So yeah. offense and defense. Mm-hmm. Um, we sp- most of us spend our life in that defensive Definitely. model, and we're we're chasing symptoms, we're chasing that kind of thing. Yes, um, living in offense um, is very passive, if you think about it, right? So, oh. I'm I'm breathing right now. I don't have to think about it. No, nope. that's offense, right? So, offense. I'm getting nutrients in. I just by breathing, by thinking, by doing these things. Uh, my, I don't have to think about that. That's yeah. kind of passive. Active offense means I'm going to take a role in my wellness to try to. I may have to make some sacrifices to try to elevate my health for years to come. Right. Right. So, um, you know, they always say one meal, one, one meal doesn't make you fat. Just like one meal won't make you skinny. You, yeah. You have it. to work at it and it's a lifelong commitment. So. It is a long, yeah, yeah. I th- I'm 38. And one of the things I have just realized pretty, pretty heavily in the last couple of years is just things take a long time. It just takes a long time. And so even for this podcast, it's like, Matt, if I'm if you're gonna start it, are you willing to do it for some time? It's not something that just is overnight success and, no. and most people are not an overnight success. Some of us can hit that lotto, right? Of course. Right. Uh, but most of us, have you ever read the book, uh, The Compound Effect? Yes. Yeah, great book, right? So same idea. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna start this podcast, which is what you did, and mm-hmm. it may take off right away and may not, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna slowly build it. And mm-hmm. so um I'm planning on it not taking off for some time. And I But it, just enjoy it. Enjoy it, that's it. if you enjoy the process, yeah. that's that's well that's where that's really where it begins. That's where and it ends. <laughs> yeah, well that's where yeah. that's where happiness is. Happiness mm-hmm. isn't a destination. Happiness is the journey. It's, it's, journey. it's the pursuit. I know. Health. Yeah. Right. So think about this. Like I want to be at my optimal health. Health isn't like a you can't get to a just a certain destination, but you can be on that journey and keep that going. Yep. And that's this wellness juggle that I try to provide by uh, a- accessing somebody's physical, chemical, and emotional health and trying to help them understand the things they can do to better themselves. Yep. A lot of it isn't even in my office. I just I'm going to adjust you and I'm going to give you some tips, advice, or some exercises, mm-hmm. some stretches, and 
Actually, I, I just finished a book um, that uh, it's at the editor right now uh, that I'm going to okay. be publishing, and it's it's called The Real Food Reset. Okay. Um, and it's an elimination detoxification detoxification diet plan, essentially to help reset somebody's nutritional lifestyle. Right. So it's I, I don't like the word diet. It's it's the book is more yeah, about the, the word life- diet is. <sighs> Hmm. doesn't it's, work. It's, it's gotten a bad name. Yeah. Right? So it is more of a lifestyle, and that's what I'm saying. It's one of those yeah. factors of juggling, and chiropractic is one piece of that puzzle, and nutrition is one piece of that puzzle, and, you know, that's where this wellness juggle it comes that mm-hmm. I'm talking about. You've got to keep juggling all these different things. Did I brush Absolutely. my teeth today? Did I do my stretches? And the compound effect of that in the end is yeah. health. Yes. Is true health. Yeah. So, yeah. Really good book if you're interested in – the idea of doing kind of the same things over and over and over, okay. understanding that initially it's not going to be the way you want, okay. but in the coming years, it will most likely be. But yeah. I really like the saying, you'll overestimate what you can do in one year, but you'll underestimate what you can do in 10 years. It, it, and it's just agreed. this having this long term, um, this is a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and even if, if it's for a business. I mean, you could just say it for marketing as well. Marketing is typically, you're not going to hit a home run on your first one. Yeah. But if you do it over and over and over and over, it's eventually going to work, yes. typically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and this like is- Like a lot of things in life. You and your marketing guru, like mm-hmm. you were, we were talking about. I'm not a guru. You're not a guru? But I really genius. enjoy it. You like genius instead <laughs> of guru? <laughs> Which one do you want? <laughs> um, no, uh, it is. There's a compound effect to that as yes, well. Yes. That's what I mean. And- you know, again, only the practice has been open about six weeks. Okay. And so I know that compound effect of finding my, my tribe. Yeah. So I think it's going to take some time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm just going to keep putting myself out there. This is how I, you know, see health. And this is what yeah. I want to help you elevate uh, is that natural ability within you to fight off these things in the world, right? Yeah. I mean, we have an immune system that we were created with. It's amazing. It's, it's truly amazing how it works. And uh, you can either... You know, every everything you do, every choice you make either feeds disease or fights disease, yeah. if we think about that. And that's that's a that's kind of a big burden, but it's it's right. It is a true statement. Right? Yeah. So one of the things I have learned in marketing to to put a bow on you being a chiropractor mm-hmm. is this idea of niching down. Yeah. Um, have one product essentially do it really really well and then you can later add on other products yes. typically how this works so i want you to put a bow on it who is the person that fits someone that would just love being in your tribe so it really this is this is kind of i'll put it this way yeah mom right a mom with kids That is because she usually runs the family's health. We were Mm -hmm. talking about kind of the roles a lot of times. A lot of times dads aren't as involved in the health uh, and the understanding of what their kids need. And I'm not knocking up. It's just true. uh, Mom. Emily has a keen sense of the health of my children. And it's not just this physical (laughs) chemical, like nutritional health, like emotional health too. Absolutely. My wife is much more apt to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's like, you know, anyway. So, um, Mm I guess I guess if I had to narrow it down, that would be it. I, I like to say family because yeah. that's what I really look for is I'm trying to create that community and that family yeah. of people that I help to take care of and that we work through problems that aren't just – they're not always a simple fix as I was saying. Of it's not. not. A, it's not a quick fix. Not But – Throughout time, a lot of the families I've worked with, they still, they're, I mean, they're, I've had one just drive two weeks ago. She drove up to Prescott to get adjusted, brought her kids, brought her husband, because yeah. I've taken care of them for the yeah, last 15 years. She still calls me, you know, wants to send an MRI or wants to ask me a nutrition question. Yep. And we have that relationship. Yeah. And so I guess, and it's the mom who mainly always reaches out to yep. me. And uh, I think that's, that's probably the kingpin in all of our families that keep us all healthy as mom, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank, yeah. thank God for them. Absolutely. <laughs> that, was, that was a perfect way to, to wrap up Okay, talking about being a chiropractor. Yeah. The next part of the podcast oh, is no. where I say, what is it about Greater Prescott that you love? You've already gone over a lot of that. So I'll ask you because you are new, mm-hmm. what are one or two things that have surprised you in your time being here for just under two months? That surprised me. Um, yeah. I'm going to jump right into the community, mm-hmm. right? So I, I'll be honest. I was a little nervous moving from California mm-hmm. uh, to Arizona and wondering if I was you know, not going to be welcomed, so yeah. to speak. And I have been, just like I said, welcomed more than I thought was possible. Yeah. Uh, like I said, from 
walking into a coffee shop and seeing 10 people I already know. And I'm like, man, I've only been here for a few weeks, but I see a lot of the same people in our community who are always, they're reaching out on Instagram, they're reaching out on Facebook, they're, they now have my cell phone number, they're coming in as patients. Yeah. And that community is, is what I, exactly the reason why we came here. Mm-hmm. So It's cliche. It is. But all my guests <laughs> and me and my family, it's we same, say it right? too. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. to a T. I mean, Prescott is beautiful. And that is, mm-hmm. I selfishly want the outdoor active lifestyle. Yeah. So that selfishly is part of it. But again, I'm raising a family. And yeah. dad, and I want my kids to have a community. And the, the, even the community that I grew up with has now grown extremely like we were talking about. Yeah. But the guys that I grew up with, the I was mentioning a few of them that moved here. Yep. There's a loyalty that's different growing up in a small town. There's a connection that's different growing up in that small town that you can't beat. You know, we're right. not just a number. You're you're a family. You're a, you're 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 somebody they connect with. You know, in a different way, and that's really mm-hmm. what we're here for. So yep. yeah, yeah. Great community here. It, it really is. Great. It is cliche, but I am, we'll go into the rapid fire question section. Okay. I'm going to ask you seven questions, and you, since you are new to town, okay. it may be a little more difficult, but we'll work through okay. it. So yeah. here it goes. You, you can help me out then, right? Question number one, okay. what's your favorite restaurant in Greater Prescott so far? So far, um, I so El Gato Azul, um, we went there on our anniversary... No, it wasn't our, that was my birthday. We went to El Gato Azul and absolutely loved it. Um, I loved tapas and we, I think we had 15 plates. So I loved it. Um, it been hard to get back in there. They're, they're yeah, busy. They are busy. They are busy. Yeah. So, but that's been our favorite restaurant so far. I will say this, and it's not a fine dining restaurant, but I just, um, somebody sent me over to Bill's Grill. Yeah. I love Bill's Grill. Well, we love Bill's Grill. Yes. I can't eat gluten or anything else. So I got a hamburger, lettuce wrap, and it was Absolutely cooked perfect. Just it was amazing. It was a cool little spot too. It just felt very home. It felt it like home. Felt feel it is. Yeah, we can take the kids. They can be loud. Yeah, it, we fit right in. Yes, and mm-hmm. I, so we did like that. But El Gato was definitely our favorite. Good. Yeah, and that is the number one answer is on the podcast. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's El Gato. It's not like this. That was a test. Have it was been? not a test. But well, now I'm official. Uh, press, <laughs> Apparently, press you probably just haven't been many places. I heard the either. fin was good. And the so the fin I have is not the next... been, but okay. it's. I've heard it's great. That's the next place mm-hmm. we're going to go there. I think in a week or so we have a babysitter, so we're going to go and mm-hmm. uh, check out the fin. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll let you know. A lot of one. nice places to yeah. eat here. Okay, well, you can edit that one in once I know how the fin. Is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next question. What is your favorite thing so far about Greater Prescott? Favorite thing? Um, it's going to be cliche. It's hard not to. We already talked about it. The yeah. community. This is the the number one reason why people move here, right? Number two, obviously, the beauty, the outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, this place has already felt like home again, right? Good. So, uh, I, I didn't. I grew up in that Temecula Hemet area, but it has expanded so much that you lost that feeling. And already being back here, I'm like, all right, we're yeah. we're back in the groove. Yeah. So, what's the number one thing on your Greater Prescott bucket list? Um, there's so many. Th- my, right, so I have go a for huge it. bucket. Go list, for it. Right. So it never ends. Um, I, there's a lot of hikes and there's mm-hmm. a lot of rock climbing that I want to check out. I haven't had a chance to do it. I I want to bring my kayaks down. We want to do some yep. of the lakes. Um, I do have a number one, so I'm getting to that. Um, I'm new to some of the trails here, mountain okay. biking. There are, there are some crazy trails. Okay. So I'm working on that, getting better at it. Um, but my number one thing that I have on my bucket list to do soon is the uh, Triple Crown. So it's it's three peaks in Prescott uh, that you have to hike in 24 hours. Okay. And, and so it's I, – I, I don't know. They're, they're, he's on Instagram with me, and I think that's mm-hmm. what made me – like I've seen it and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I like a challenge, right? Yep. So I like something that pushes me a little bit and other people are doing it. So that's my number one right at the moment. Okay. Yeah. What are the names of the peaks? Um, I don't know that I would recognize them. I but... really don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm that new. Um, yeah. I believe you do go up to the top of, um, that's going to, I should know this, Thumb Butte. Uh, okay. I believe that's part of it. Uh, but I know there's three peaks total. Um, I contacted the gentleman that does not He sent me the yeah. plans. I haven't – I literally – it's been there sitting there six yeah. weeks. I haven't had a chance to do it because we have – we hit the ground running yeah, uh, no, with exactly. the business and with the house. and. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. You have to do it. Yeah. I'm, it'll, it'll happen sooner or later. Good. So. What is your favorite all-time – I don't know what to ask for a chiropractor, so maybe what's your all-time favorite sport? Sport. 
See, that, that's another good hard one because I have too many. So give them. Like my classic baseball, right? Mm-hmm. I grew up and I love baseball. I don't really watch it that much anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I love playing it still. I get out okay. with my kids. I coach my, my son's team and I'm hoping to get them on a team here soon. I got to figure that out. Great. Um, I really got into more of the extreme sports where okay. I do like uh, motocross. And Temecula yeah. was a haven for that. We had a lot of motocross riders in our office, a lot okay. of UFC fighters too there, which was oh, interesting. a lot of them in my office. Uh, we were right down the street from Dan Henderson. So, you know, some really cool UFC fighters I got to okay. take care of, which they are, you got to be really careful when they come in because you never know what they have. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, beat up all the time. Yeah, um, interesting. So I love a lot of the extreme sports, the X Games stuff, the skateboarding. Okay. What are three words to describe living in Greater Prescott for seven weeks? Seven weeks. Um, well, I, I've already kind of named them community, mm-hmm. beauty, um, and home. Great. If you weren't a chiropractor, what type of work would you be doing? Um, I think we kind of talked about this before. If, if I, I think if, I, if they had a, a position where I could just hike around and climb and be outdoors yeah. and right. So one of my dreams as a chiropractic office, that I'm looking for a building that I would love to have an outdoor adjusting room that you know could be put away, obviously. But um, yeah. I love to be out in nature. That's probably the least favorite thing I, that about chiropractic yeah. is I'm indoors all day long. Yeah, and I love to be outdoors. Yep. Uh, so maybe a park ranger. I guess okay. if I had to pick, like yeah, yeah. I had a park ranger on the podcast. Did you really? It was local? Greg. Okay. Oh, I met him, but he was in the California forest system for his 30 some years. Rad. It was. Uh, it Could was, you imagine that? Like, you're just hiking around every day. and I loved having Greg on the podcast. It was great. Yeah, every time we r- we'd run into a park ranger in the Sierras, it's where I spent most of my time backpacking. Okay. Always just the nicest people. Just wanted oh, to hang Craig out. Was, exactly. Yeah, the guy that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Last question for oh. you. What do you think your favorite summer activity will be in Prescott? Um, hands down, the hiking. Okay. Right? So I love the kayaking. I love all that stuff, too. If I could pick one thing to do, it would just be in peace in nature, you know, hiking, walking around. Uh, I love all the extreme sports, mm-hmm. but I also like the peace and tranquility that nature gives. So hiking almost it fits both of those where I get – that exercise in, but yep. I'm also calm where yes. I'm not uh, dangling from a rope, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, which is fun adrenaline, but not as peaceful. All right. Yeah. Last question. Uh-oh. It's your turn. What is one question you have for me? Can I have two? Absolutely. What, and I'm sure you get this one a, a lot, what What inspired you to do a podcast that wasn't just about Matt Roddy? That wasn't just uh, – that, that was about your community and, and stories, right? Because this is what you do. You're mm-hmm. not necessarily just doing – promoting a business or – you're talking about the stories behind the people in Prescott. Right. I – so ultimately, I am build, I want to build a tribe. Okay. That's – Same, yeah. From, from the beginning. I'd really like to do some real estate investing. Okay. Which takes money. Yeah. Which takes just knowing people and – um, that this is kind of the first step in a town where I don't know a whole lot of people. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get to that point. Yeah. Um, but just basically building a tribe as that is one way if you want to do marketing yeah. um, to get people in your court, so to speak. Yeah. And then you can do different things once you have people in your court. You can. Mm-hmm. You can. Connections are, are very powerful. The relationships. Yep. Relationships in life. So question two then. Mm-hmm. What made you – what was intriguing to you about having a chiropractor as essentially on your podcast and part of your tribe? I have, I essentially know nothing about mm-hmm. a, what a chiropractor does okay. until you educated me okay. about what you do. And so I couldn't have told you if I – do I need to go see a chiropractor? Yeah. I, don't even, I don't even know what they do. Yeah. Um, and – you wanted to be a chiropractor for some reason. Yeah. And so there's like that there's background, story. That, that story. Exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. Everyone who sits across the table, uh, when I tell them what we're going to talk about, you just, you don't quite understand, but yeah. you're probably getting to the point in the podcast and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm connecting the dots here. Yeah. And it's just learning about your story, yeah. why you're passionate about what you do. A lot of chiropractors out there. There is. But I want people to learn more, enough about you to know, I want to go to that guy yeah. or I don't. Yes. Well, and that's that's, that's fine. fine. Yes. There's someone out there who 
may be a better fit for you. Yes. And I'm, that's the tribe I'm looking for. Exactly. I, I, again, mm-hmm. you know, after 15 years there in Temecula, I had built a lot of that tribe yeah. to where that was, it was, it's, you know, it was a joy every day. It's like, go to work. Like, hell, you know, I'm excited to go. Right. Um, and like I said, it was hard to leave, but that, mm-hmm. that tribe is what we're all looking for is that community that you fit with and that um, yep. you can help with. Mm-hmm. Right? So helping people, I think in the end of the end of this whole life is going to yeah. be a big yeah, you know, big thing for us. So yeah, and it's fun when there is a business owner that yeah. I can bring help bring them some exposure. Yeah, no, like what a what a cool opportunity yep. in a very non confrontational, non salesy, just a very calm conversation, indirect. Other than being uh, on video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was there anything that we didn't cover that you would actually? We'll end on this. Yeah. Um, Look at the camera yep. and just tell the people if you are interested in the such and such and such or you need help with this or that or that, yep. by all means, let us know. Come on over to the office and then leave your information and I can sure. I will put that up on wherever I post it. Yeah, and I think you did a great job at it for me. So thank you. Uh, Dr. Nick Shimbury with Prescott Family Chiropractic. Uh, if there's anything you need, you can contact us at 928-277-4992. Uh, text or, or, or cell phone. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at Prescott Chiropractor and on Facebook at Prescott Family Chiropractic. And uh, anything we can do to help help you, let us know. We'd love to. Great. Yeah. Thanks again for your time. Thank you for having me. Sir. Anything else before we wrap it up? No, there's a million things we could talk about. I know. That's, that's, that's kind hard. of the fun part. It is. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> I forgot to tell this part of this. I know. It doesn't matter. I know. It, it was fun. That's the and I appreciate part. you having me on. You're very welcome. Yeah, Let's you. close it out with a nice big smile. You got it. Everyone, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.